Hey everybody, Kim here with Little Biz Resources. And today let's talk about finding your target market when you start with a product or service. Because aren't we kind of working backwards? All right, so how do we know where to look? If we're going to focus our marketing to those platforms where we find our customers, which we talked about in the prior video, if you haven't seen that, we really need to know how to find our customers. Now let's look at the normal flow of product creation and marketing, and then we'll look at what happens for many of us in e-commerce when we get started, right? The normal flow of a product or a service is that you have, there's customers, so people out there, and they have some sort of, there's a gap in some, in the deli service delivery, there's a gap in, in the particular solution that they have. They have a problem, right? And it's usually in a specific niche. It's not just generally a problem, but it's a, a, a problem that is very specific. And then you s may come up with a product or a solution because of that. Now, many of us do this naturally and don't realize it. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But I, to give an example, let's say that there are customers, there are people out there that are overweight. Now, this is already narrowing it down, right? We're already narrowed it down from the world to people who are overweight, then there's their problem is they need to lose weight. Now, not everybody who's overweight wants to lose weight or thinks that they need to lose weight or whatever, right? So this is going to be still narrowing it down, but this is a specific problem. Then you have a solution and it might be a supplement. It might be a, a specific diet using healthy foods. It might be exercise or exercise equipment or, you know, something specific that, that addresses this problem that the, that specific people have. Okay. And are looking for a solution. All right. Now what happens, I see this happen a lot with not just myself. I've done this a lot and historically I still do it, but I see this happen a lot, especially with our, our print on demand people and, and our um, people who get into e-commerce, right? They just are like, oh, I'm going to sell this product and everybody wants it. So why wouldn't everybody buy it? But then what happens is people don't buy it and they don't know why. And so this is what, what we do is we create the product with the solution. And then we're like, well, we know that there's customers out there, but we don't know who there it's everybody. We need to target everybody because everybody wants our product, but that's not true, right? That's not true. Um, and we know this, we subconsciously know this, but we just don't know how to narrow it down to who wants our product. We know they're out there. So we're like, okay, well, well, well they just want my product because it's cool right? And that's a lot happens a lot. I'm going to do, I'm going to put up this cool design. I'm going to put it out there. Okay. But who would want it, right? What is the gap or the problem in that specific niche? So how do you, we're going to be looking at how do you find your customer avatar or dream customer when you start with a product or service first? So we, the first thing we need to do is we need to assess why we created the product or the service in the first place, right? Was it in response to a need or a desire does it match a passion or desire? Like something that, does it match that? Does it, and think about emotion for all these, right? So I said, can you tap into an emotion? But really these are all emotions. And then does it answer a fear, concern, or worry, right? I mean, I think I, I can't help but think about the fear, concern, worry. I go, okay, when I was you know, years ago, when um, my bred beagles and St. Bernard's not together, but we had, we had, we would microchip them, right? We would microchip ours at least. I don't know if we microchipped the puppies. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. And, but we microchipped our dogs so that we could find them when they ran off. And recently, like last year, the year before, maybe, maybe three years ago now, there was an article that came out in Texas about, um, this controversy in this school that had RFID chips, which is, you know, a type of microchip thing um, put for the, on the students, but they didn't put them in under the skin or anything like you do on animals. They had them in like a card that you had to carry around and stuff. And so they were tracking where the students were. And so it was like uh, this big concern about, oh, privacy and how, if, if somebody taps into it, they can get tracked and blah, blah, blah. But I can't help but think that the reason why that was created was because of a fear, a concern or a worry or tr addressing a problem, right? We don't know where the kids are at any given time. So, Hey, if we track them, this solves that problem, right? So somebody undoubtedly thought, okay, here's the problem. Let's come up with a solution. Or they had that and said, or somebody who sold the RFID chips. And this happens a lot in medication I see, right? Oh, we have this medication. It does this. What ailment can we link it to, to sell, sell more of it? And that's the same thing, right? I have an RFID chip or some sort of tracking chip. And I'm like, Ooh, I sell it for this purpose. Oh, I could come up with this other purpose. That's marketing, 
right? That's marketing. So if you think about your product and you answered because it's cool, you probably need to stop and think harder about the product or service. I want you to understand that just because you don't know how to answer the questions yet doesn't mean it's a bad product or service. Think about the pet rock. I go on this rant every time I talk about the pet rock. I think every single one of us, or at least one of our friends at some point, had a pet rock and it didn't need to be marketed to them. They picked it up and they put it in their pocket and that was their pet rock, right? I'm pretty sure my daughter has like 30 of them. Thankfully, she doesn't keep them very long and they end up going into the yard afterwards. But the person who decided to market the pet rock did a good job, right? I mean, sure, it's a rock, right? I mean, it's a rock and you go, okay, well, how am I going to market this? They tapped into emotion, right? Well, they tapped into two things. One, they tapped into kids wanting everything. So, hey, look, you can have this pet rock. You don't have to feed it. You don't have to walk. You don't have to do anything. It'll never die. Okay. Oh, kids. That's great for kids. It's fun. It's, it's unique. And then they're bugging their parents at checkout. I want this pet rock. I want this pet rock. And the parents look at it and go, you know what? It's cheap enough. It gets them to shut up and I don't have to buy them the hamster that's going to die. Sure. I'll get the pet rock. So they're tapping into these these different areas of emotion and need and everything else. So if you can, if somebody can sell a pet rock, you can sell whatever your item is. Don't do pet rock. It's already taken. So if you think that it's cool, what makes it cool? What makes it so that it's something that is, is desirable, right? Why would someone buy it? Now let's look at my ornaments example, my Celtic ornaments. Okay. All right, so this, you can see this is a picture of one of the Celtic ornaments that I have. It's That's actually part of a set. So when I created my Celtic ornaments, I did it for two reasons. One, Celtic designs are cool and have some demand. And you can check that with keyword research, right? And the second thing is, and we'll talk about keyword research in a minute, but the second thing is I made them as sets and put them together because it costs less for me to combine them and sell them as a set than it did to sell them individually. So there is an element of financial benefit here, right? Now, I accidentally created value when I did that. And that's something we're going to talk about another time, but I wanted to plant that in your brain that you want to always be thinking about value to help you sell as well. So not only are you looking for your avatar, you're also looking for how to make your product valuable to your avatar. And your avatar is just the customer who's going to buy, the the ideal customer who would buy. Now to sell this item, I can use two approaches. And this is the part that a lot of people don't talk about, right? I can sell on platforms because this is e-commerce. I can sell on platforms or marketplaces that rely on keywords or search terms. Okay. Those are the same thing, by the way, keywords are search terms, but keywords are search terms. So if I go on to example, Amazon, this is actually how I sold them was I went on to Amazon and I created a, a listing and everything for Celtic ornaments. Now I started a long time ago, so there's a lot more competition now, but back then there was hardly any competition at all. And especially at my price point, it was super cheap. They got a set. So it was very valuable to people and they, and not everybody loves them. I'll tell you that not everybody loves them, but they, but enough people love them and you can do a lot with them. So I, and as I evolved and my competition grew, I started to realize that Celtic ornaments really were, were really tapped into the Irish market. So Irish ornaments, right? So now I'm starting to expand my keywords, Celtic ornaments, Irish ornaments, you know, theoretically Scottish ornaments, but apparently even though I'm, I'm a, I'm more Scottish than I am Irish and I love these. So I'm like, oh, I must be Scottish. No, apparently it's an Irish thing more. I don't know. You, you can tell me if you think so. But the problem with that is that you don't, you don't get any data, right? So you don't get any data, but you can at least use it and sell it by keywords and search terms. So there, you don't have to have your customer avatar to be able to sell products. You could use keywords. The problem is if you're not on a platform or a marketplace, so if you're not using Google ads, if you're not using, um, you know, Bing ads, if you're not using search term things, Amazon, Etsy, something where people can type the term in that would match your product, then you're going to have to rely on search engine optimization. And that's not easy to do in e-commerce at all anymore. So you do eventually want to figure out who would want to buy Celtic ornaments. And in this case, I started to figure that out as I looked at the other Celtic ornaments, which we'll talk about. So let's just quickly talk about keywords and search terms. I don't want to go into a a huge amount of depth of this because we're not doing search engine optimization. Okay. We are just doing this to collect data. 
So keywords are search terms. I want to remind you of that because literally I'm going to use keywords. I'm going to use search terms. They're interchangeable. To know if there is a demand based on a keyword, you'll need to check the volume of searches per month. Okay, we're, we'll, we'll dive into keyword research in a completely different series, but let's take a look at some quick ways you can do this. You really do need to use a tool for this. I don't, I'm not aware of any way to figure it out otherwise. So keywords everywhere is the one that I use the most. And it's, I spend like 10 bucks. It, it lasts the entire year for me because I don't do it enough um, keyword research to, to use up that. And it's cheaper than running ads. Now you can use the Google keyword planner and it's free, but you only get the better volume estimates. So like it'll tell you 1,000 to 10,000 and it's like 1,500 searches a month and they're giving you a 1,000 to 10,000. Right. So Google Keyword Planner, if you're not running ads, is not very good. It can give you some ideas, some data, but it's not useful. It's not as useful as it could be. Then there are tools for specific platforms like eRank for Etsy, or I think there's Marmalade as well. And then Merchant Words for Amazon. Right. And I'm sure there's tons of other ones too that I'm just th throwing out a couple that I've used. So how to start developing the avatar. So the customer avatar is basically the ideal customer for your product or service. Of course, you really don't know this. And typically you, you develop this information based on data you collect from your sales. But what if you don't have sales and, or you started with the product first, right? Then you need to ask these questions to get started. Who needs your product? For the Celtic ornaments, we realized there was a large desire for Irish descendants to celebrate their roots at Christmas. We also realized weddings and other Irish or Celtic celebrations opened up opportunities. So think St. Patrick's Day, right? Now, this was tied to emotion. People are passionate about this. They're passionate about their roots. They're passionate about their celebrations, right? So eventually, as you go through, you might be able to narrow this down to specifically, you know, women are more likely to purchase or men are more likely to purchase or Christians are more likely to purchase or atheists are more likely to purchase, whatever it is, right? So you can start to narrow those things down eventually, but a lot of that data you're not going to be able to find until you start making sales. So a lot of this, it always cracks me up because people go, you need to know your customer avatar in order to market. And I'm like, mm, not really. It depends on what you're selling, right? It depends on what you're selling. And the perfect example of that is if you're selling on Amazon, you don't need to know who's buying. If you want to market off of Amazon, you kind of do, right? If you want to market on Pinterest and social media generally. So then the next question you can ask, why do they need your product? What motivated them to look for your product or want to stop and see more about your product, right? And in the case of Celtic ornaments, they stopped because the Celtic symbols, the Celtic ornaments are symbols of Celtic and Irish roots, right? And other roots that are the Celtic, Celtic roots. So if they have some sort of Celtic ties, then they're going to be stopping and looking at it. Now, yes, they're cool. And they're going to be people who are going to stop and just buy them because they look good. But the, that's not the customer avatar, right? The customer avatar is who is your most likely buyer. And if you think of it this way, if you say, okay, well, here's the perfect person who would buy my product. If you can reach like 80 to 85% of, of that in a regular, in a, just somebody, anybody, they're probably going to be more likely to purchase your product. I'm not going to say always, they'll always buy it because there's no guarantees on that. But so another one to think about is, especially if you have a big ticket product, is what audience can afford your product, right? This might be the easiest one to help narrow it down, narrow your audience down. Because if you're like, hey, I'm, I'm selling a $10,000 product here, or I'm, t I'm selling yachts, you're probably not going to be going out on Craigslist or going out on, you know, Facebook trying to build up a yacht audience per se. Now, yes, you can. And I'm not saying Facebook is you shouldn't go on there if you have a yacht. I'm just saying that you got to keep in mind that your target market may not be on a specific platform. We'll talk about how to find that. So some ways to narrow this down. Ultimately, you want your own data. If you can capture that, it's great, but you may not be able to capture that. I mean, think about that. If you have a, a Shopify store, how many people are giving you their, their um, ages and their income levels and everything else? They're not, right? So how do you get that, right? You're like, wait a second, how do I get that? Well, a lot of times you can't, but guess who has it? Facebook and Google and Microsoft, they have all that information already. So all they need to know, if you're adding in their, the Facebook pixel, if you're on Facebook, you know, Google has their tracking, Microsoft has their tracking. If you are, are tracking the data and the conversions and the sales, 
then you're going to be able to match that up to their existing databases, right? Now you may eventually get a, a handle on this, on who buys what, but it, that's not the most critical part, right? It's not the most critical part, especially if you're doing stuff online, which is what we're mostly doing. So if we want to narrow this down a little bit more, we can spy on our competition. We can use, and I'm going to show you how to do this right now, but I'm going to just go over these real quick. Keywords everywhere or SEMrush, which I'm not going to show you SEMrush. It's really good or SEMrush. I think some people call it. I'm going to put the link in the description if you want to take a look at that and give it a try. I think they have a free trial on there and it might be worth dabbling to see if that's something that, that works for you. Uh, similarweb.com, we're going to take a look at the competitors of our competitor, right? You'll see. And then we'll look at the similarities and you need to keep track of your competition. We'll come back to this in just a moment. All right. So the first thing that you need to do is I actually went to Google. I searched Celtic ornaments and the first non Amazon or Etsy or marketplace that came up was this one is the Irish store, right? So, and this is, and actually I, what I did is I looked through there. They don't have a whole lot of products. However, because I've done my research and if you're like, Hey, I don't know if there's a specific audience that would use my product. This is how you find out, right? So, um, maybe you go, where, so in my case, I might type in, so instead of Celtic ornaments, I'll say, where did Celtic ornaments come from? Right. And then I would read, do some history, look at peoples of Ireland and parts of Britain, right? So Ireland is, is a critical one. So yeah, you know what? That makes sense. Irish ornaments, right? You can do this also with tags and with looking at other things. So when I put in Celtic ornaments, this one came up, but this is the only actual, this one sort has a Celtic design on it. And a lot of times the, I don't know how to say it, clata or whatever, the hands holding the heart and the, with the crown that a lot of that shows up a lot, even in Celtic design, like when people use Celtic designs and stuff. So for me, because I already knew that I can't, I could tell that this is a Celtic cross. I mean, it says it right here, a Celtic cross, but I can look at it. Most of this other stuff doesn't have, it may have Celtic designs on it, but see, well, here's another one. It's a Celtic cross, but they don't have any decorations like mine. Right. And you're going, wait, Kim, does that mean that they match? Yes, they match right? The same audience that would purchase these may not be the exact same match as mine, but remember I'm narrowing it down. So the ideal customer buying my product is most likely Irish, right? Cause they're going to be, now does, does that mean that somebody who's not Irish won't buy my product? No, no. Celtic designs are cool. Anybody can buy them, but I need to figure out who to target, right? Who to target? Because if I don't target a specific place, I'm not going to hit anything because I'm not aiming at anything. If I hit something, it would be on accident, right? So instead I need to figure out my target market. So I came in here, I figured out, yeah, this is it. I could come in here and do keyword research. In fact, I can come in here right now. First thing I would do, analyze this page. I'm gonna check for some keywords. And this, um, of course I've already paid for it, everything else. I know it says you need to purchase credits, but I don't know why I have them already. And then it'll come in here and it'll tell me the monthly search volume, the cost per click, which isn't critical unless you need to know that, but the, the monthly volume is important. So I have Irish ornament ornaments, and now all of these are not useful. Now decorations, decorations is interchangeable with ornaments, right? Irish ornaments, Irish decorations. So that might be another word that I come in here and go, you know what? Let me see if I can find another person. And now uh, the, I want to keep in mind, I had briefly mentioned this before we hopped over to the section. Keep track of these people, these sites, because we're going to use them another time to look at their social media, right? We're going to be looking at their social media. We're going to be looking at, at the audience and see if we can figure stuff out. Now you can see Amazon, Amazon, Oriental trading is too general. Wayfair is too general. Etsy, Windy City novelties. Irish, I think that's going to be too general too. Party City, too general. And if they don't show up on page one, that's okay, right? So, but maybe I go through here and I'm like, you know what? I don't see anybody who is like specific. Here's old world Christmas. That one might be. And they have Irish Christmas ornaments. I don't know for sure that they're going to have just Irish, but old world Christmas. Like they have Irish ornaments on here. If I'm selling ornaments, this seems like this would be a good site to find out their, you know, from them too. So stop it. So I'm like, mm, you know what? Maybe I will keep an eye on this. And again, I can do my keyword research with keywords everywhere, find some more keywords, et cetera. So no matter which way I'm going, whether it's keywords or whether I'm trying to find my avatar and get into social media, 
those are two different worlds, right? But I can do both at the same time. I can capture that information. So let's come back over here. I'm going to go to similar web. So similar web, they do have a free version. I don't know what the caps are on the free. I just know I don't pay for it. I come in here, put the website in where it says analyze any website or app. I put it in there and it comes up, right? I was interested to see that this is actually a pretty good ranking for e-commerce and they have, you know, they say total visits. I don't know what the, what the, I think it's for August of 2021. So that's pretty good. 200,000 visits a month. That's not bad at all. Right? So we know that there's a demand for Irish. Now, the other thing that was interesting to me was that only about half of their traffic comes from the United States. So that would put it down to what, a hundred thousand people, but those are a hundred thousand people looking for in August, Irish decorations, Irish stuff. And then the price points were much higher than mine too. So that tells me one, I might be able to jump my prices and two, um, there's, there's definitely a demand, right? I mean, I'm not saying a hundred thousand people is enough to warrant developing a product or anything, right? I'm just saying that, yes, this validates that, Hey, I'm not crazy. I didn't just create something that I'm the only one in the world that, that likes it. So you can see a lot of it comes from search and we're going to come down here to competitors just to kind of jump down here. And now look, we've got more shops that we can look at. And the, every single one of these, if they have, if it's Irish, which every single one of these, except for Poshmark, Poshmark's not. Um, these other ones all are Irish. So I would document every single one of those and I would keep them in a spreadsheet. And the reason why is because we're going to use them later, right? We're going to use them later, probably in the next video, which will be next Sunday, right? If you need to check the um, calendar in the, the YouTube channel art at the top of the, you know, go to the channel, go to the YouTube channel art at the top and you'll see the, the calendar. So we do social media marketing on Sundays and Mondays. Anyway, so this is what we figure this out. We pull these out and we're going to look at all our social media. We are also going to use that, by the way, to help build our audience right now. This is a trick that is takes time if you're doing it for free, but you can utilize this to help you figure out who to target and how to get the audience and how to get how to get your own data. Right. So in this case, we've we've done that. We've gotten we've gotten the competitors and now Next time in our next video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to use that data to go ahead and explore more into, um, you know, how we are going to capture customers and figure out the rest of our avatar. All right. So again, we can't directly find data, but we can glean information from these properties from their social media audiences and utilize their brands in an ethical way to help us build our audiences. Plus we'll start to see where those audiences are active, right? I mean, cause if we go in and we look at, um, the Irish store social media and we see that, you know what, they don't have very much of a, a social media following, but we know people are buying. Wh what are, how are they finding them? That's what, those are types of things that we would want to do to look at. And we'll look more at that next time. So if you have questions, you need more information about what we talked about today, please post your questions. I don't know why I don't change that word in inquiries below. Hop into the Facebook group and ask questions. You can check our channel banner. That's what it's called. Channel banner for the video schedules. You just, I'll have a link in the description. You can just go to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, you're more than welcome to. And of course, if you would like to like this video, that'd be great as well. You can also come on Thursdays for a live Q&A and literally live Q&A is whatever you want to ask that's related to building a business or marketing or anything, right? So again, check that channel manner, see what days, what videos. Personally, I think you should watch them all, but that's just me. I know some people aren't into Etsy, but they're into something else. So this today's is the social media marketing one. Follow it from, from yesterday and you will have, this is in the same playlist. So then we'll go again next week and we'll expand on this. So again, we are looking for our target market. So we know which channels to focus on. All right. So if you have questions, just post them below or ask in the Facebook group and, or come on Thursdays. Right. And thanks for watching. If you, again, please just ask any questions. All right. Thank you. Bye.